That was the twenty, this twenty second timer. We, we made it. Caleb's oh, seeing it for the first time. He has no idea. Welcome everybody. We'll let Caleb watch the rest of it. He is surprised. <laughs> <laughs> it's episode one of the final split, the all new speed running podcast. Uh, guys, welcome yeah. aboard. Good oh. to have you all here. Dude, we did it. We did good it. To be here. That was so good, dude. More Thank specifically, you. You. Golden did it. Shout outs to Golden for Thank basically. You. I had to try my best. I don't know a lot about uh, videos or editing or, or graphics or any of that. So uh, hopefully that lasts an episode or two. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's just go around and introduce you guys to the host. I mean, you guys are all familiar with them anyway, but uh, it's good to introduce everybody on the first show and just give you uh, a chance to say hello again. So on the right here in the green box... Hanging out with us, we've got Sinister One, the Punch Out Champion. How's it going, Sinister? Oh, it's going well. I'm excited. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. He's just ready. That's it. That's all. That's I'm all ready. Man, I'm ready few, to go. Few words, but they're powerful. Uh, below me in the red box there, and uh, wearing the shorter afro today is uh, our man Spike Vegeta. Spike, how are you? Dude, I'm doing great. I'm so happy for this. It's been. Uh getting hyped for this for a few weeks now and uh i've been saying for a while i think the speedrun community could use another show like this and we're finally getting it going let's do it i i am with you on that and wrapping it up uh the man that's probably the most important on the show to this week we've got our guest the shirtless flexing caleb hart 42 what's going on caleb not too much i'm dude i'm i'm real real hype right now i'm real glad that i was like the first guest because it was just like, all right, let's get that first impression. And I'm about to hype, dude. And this show is going to be hype. It is. That's what, need. That's what we need. So let's carry the hype over to every other guest that's going to be on this show. I'm real. I'm real glad to be here. It's going to be. It's going to be great. Well, we're glad this to have you. This is setting the bar, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Not setting the bar, and he's saying, all right, we got the standard here. I guess I don't know. I'm going to have to start working out so I can go shirtless on a future yes. episode. That's <laughs> true. That's all so there's eight. There is a two roundhouse minimum for all future guests now. Oh man, setting the bar. Set, gonna... hey, setting the bar. Set the bar right now. Striker's next, right? So Stryker, Stryker, Stryker better, uh... he's on deck. The call outs already, man. <laughs> we're not even five minutes in the show. He's calling out our next guest. There we go. I like it. Well, guys, uh, let's go ahead and get into our first topic of the day. Then, uh, as we go ahead and press start on this show, get this thing going. Uh, here we go. I think this is an important question. What is the final split all about? So it's a good thing to uh, kind of introduce to you guys what we're going to be talking about on the show and just give you a general idea of it. So I'll go ahead and uh, at least start off with uh, my definition of the show, and then we'll kind of pass it off to uh, Sinister and Spike for some thoughts as well. But basically, our, our whole goal with this is we just want to provide another fun show for the speedrunning community. Um, all of us are big fans of the community and we want to be able to give back so we're hoping that we can do it through some highlights through some discussion uh and uh, the occasional blooper as well so that's kind of our, our goal with the show here give you guys a nice short show once a week to uh tune into uh and you know whether it lasts a few episodes or a few years we're just hoping you enjoy the ones that we make so that's what i have to say uh is there anything you guys want to add to that spike or sinister what do you, what do you guys think what are you looking forward to doing on the show I'm looking forward to having some some good discussions, possibly a little debate here and there, uh, providing some news, discussing the ongoings of uh, speedrunning the community, all the all the new developments and whatnot. You know, talking about some runs here and there, of course, too. But yeah, it's it's just fun and hype. And uh, Spike, what are you thinking? I'm looking forward to being correct on all of those debates. Being um, correct, but, all right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> But no, other than that, I've been saying for two years now, I, I guess I got into a little bit of this intro. For two years now, I've been thinking uh, another podcast could be used for the speedrunning community. Uh, uh, there's, uh, you know, somewhere we can all come together as a community and talk about the stuff going on with all the speedrunning, possibly all the drama, all the, you know, kind of out of boundsy type stuff, uh, other than just Twitter. So I think it's, I'm really pumped that we get to bring it together tonight and uh, hopefully for a long time get to do this yeah so, and uh yeah caleb as a guest i mean you're you're excited to be here uh and share it with us so uh you know that's always a good thing to see but wh what are you hoping you get out of your experience today do you want to be the winner of the show is that is that what you're hoping for do we just declare you the winner and well i mean it's all about being the best right so okay 
I, I gotta I gotta strive to be the best. And if I mean I, I gotta I gotta win everything, right? Okay. All right. So we'll do our best to make sure you win the show and the rest of us lose today. Get, <laughs> How does that sound? Hey, hey. Gonna get bought free. Bop for free. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. You don't don't talk to me like that. I'm the host. <laughs> All right, with that being said, uh that's that's enough like of a brief introduction to the show. Let's go ahead and dive right into our first topic of the day, uh, which is gonna be our clippy clip. Guys, Super Metroid's been busted wide open again. We've got some more space-time shenanigans. Check this out. This is the new way to end the game. Uh, using the space-time beam. If you take a look here, we're sitting in the ocean fly room at the moment, but using the space-time beam, which, by the way, busts the game open into a million different directions, uh, you're going to end up being able to trigger the escape sequence with this. And you're conveniently right next to the ship, so you're going to finish the game as well. What else is there to say about Super Metroid at this point? It's just busted wide open, don't you think? How yeah. recent is all this stuff with the GT code and all this? Because so I, I personally did not see anything about this until I so started streaming a little bit after AGDQ. Yeah, so GT code, the category, has been around for a while. Uh, prior to this, they were doing kind of a reverse escape uh, when they would beat the game. Um, so the GT code is nothing too new, but the space time beam uh, for a while didn't really know. Uh, people hadn't really dug into it to figure out all that it could do. Um, and they're discovering that the charge beam is kind of the key to everything at this point, And it's allowing them to uh, trigger the end from multiple different rooms in the game. And this one was just the most convenient because it's very close to the end of the game. So uh, I know that Zos and Ivan have been going back and forth at this already. And they have... Uh, 19 minute times, I believe, at the moment. Wow. Uh, Ivan, Ivan did cut the Taz yesterday. Beat the so, Taz. Uh, yeah, the the Taz is ripped, and they're they're just finding new developments all the time because the community for Super Metroid is so big. There's like a lot of people working on this at the same time. It's kind of almost reminiscent a little bit of Ocarina of Time when that. Game I was got about to say. Ocarina of Time, I just grew used to every day they were going to find something new. Whether it was big or small, they found something. And all of a sudden, every day I'm checking out Ivan or Zoe's streams, and they're finding something else. Yeah, this is one of those tricks that you go to sleep, and the next morning it's completely different again. Like, it's just constantly yeah. evolving, and hopefully this is still accurate at this point. For all we know, you know, we went live, and it's probably changed already again. But Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, chat, the chat is saying 1853 is the new, uh, the new low. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. So again, to remind you guys, this is used in a GT code run, the Gold Torzo code. It's a developer code that was put into the game. Uh, and that basically allows you to get a ton of items if you enter the Gold Torzo room uh, from the right side instead of from the usual left. Um, but they're going to be adding on to this now by escaping a lot faster. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, like you mentioned, go going the way of Ocarina of Time a little bit. Uh, I'd, I'd actually like to hear from Caleb two things. Number one, what do you think about Super Metroid right now? Number two, would you want something like this to happen to your beloved Mega Man X? Okay, first question. Right now, what I got to say about Super Metroid is that it's easily one of the top five, if not three, speed games out there just for the fact that there are so many categories now, I mean, with this new category included, you know, you got 100%, you got any percent, you got any percent glitched, you got any, like, any percent GT code, and then you got reverse boss order, you got low percent ice, low percent speed booster, like, and then, and then the game really goes well with bingo, too, so it's like, like, it's such an awesome speed game to learn, because all the diversity that you have. So it's like, right now, if this category, this recent one was discovered, can be marathon friendly due to, you know, it being consistent, that's going to blow people's minds, dude, because it's like, yeah. they know Super Metroid as, okay, maybe a 50 minute run, but it's like, okay, GG, it's under 20 minutes, they're going to be like, what, what is this? Like what? What? Why? Why? Exactly. What? It's that same Ocarina of Time wow factor thing. When for the first is time somebody life? sees the warp from the Deku Tree. Right. Is this real life? Like what? What did I just see? So it's gonna be like that. 
Second question, yes, because of the, the diversity factor. It's like, well, Mega Man X is kind of limited to 80% and 100%. Seeing a new category other than 8 Mavericks would be really nice. One, it would introduce a new category. Two, it would, it would just break the game completely and give every X runner or previous X runner more motivation to run the game because of this new said skip that might save 5, 10, 15 minutes, however long it is. So, yes, I would because it, it adds to the game basically, right? Yeah, yeah it, it only adds to, it to only adds the game. It does not take away because you still have the categories that previously existed plus right. The new category that now exists. Yeah, and it should be pointed out that none of this stuff that's being found is being applied to your typical any percent. You're not going to see people doing this on, you know, a Friday night Metroid race. Sure. Um, so it, it is limited to, you know, GT code, I think, uh, for the most part. Um, that's where you're going to see people doing it or, or doing runs with this trick. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting thing. I think it's always cool when a game gets busted open like that and uh, yeah. some, some nice finds uh, for Super Metroid there. It's only been 20 years, guys. I think we'll run out of things to break eventually, but I guess not. <laughs> Dude, right. you, never know. you never know. Like, you never know. OOT's, OOT recently yeah. had you know, some new stuff found, and it's just like, okay, they keep finding new stuff. So this... Yeah, we keep talking about OOT any percent. It's done all the time, but they are every time finding a few more things. There's, to there's always something, about. right? Yeah. All right, we're going to move on, guys, uh, because we're going to talk about the, the man of the hour uh, at this point. It is time. We got real talk coming up here. Real talk with Caleb. That's the that's the cue, guys. Oh, look at that. He's pumped up. He's not even he's he's flexing. Look at that. Our guest this week is Caleb Hart, the Mega Man X specialist, and uh, you know everybody's favorite shirtless speedrunner. So, Caleb, let me let me ask you first of all, uh, just give us a brief uh, mm. explanation of you know your involvement with Mega Man X. When did you start? Um, you know, where have you taken it? What have you done with it? And uh, yeah, what's the current state of Mega Man X? Take us, take us through that. Cool, man. I like, to, I like telling the story. You know, it means a lot to me. So, how they get started? Well, it all comes down to the grandfather of Mega Man X speedrunning, and his name is Tiki. Tiki is the prime reason that I started speedrunning at all because the first video of Mega Man X speedrunning that I saw was his run I think it was like um a hundred percent run in like 40 minutes or something like that this was a long time ago because if the record was 40 minutes that that just tells you 40 I can almost do that That's pretty yeah. Good. yeah yeah so um, I gotta give shout outs to Tiki for pretty much bringing me into the speedrunning community and meeting amazing people like everybody in the Skype call first off, everybody in the chat, all my stream viewers, shout outs to them, yada yada. So um, Tiki has been the primary example. So pretty much I looked at his video and I was just like, you know what? I play like that. I'm gonna do that. So I did. And... I started by casually speedrunning. This was before, you know, we all did the whole live stream thing. And, and then, you know, we were on Speed Demos Archive. Spike, you know, you, you're one of the OG members. Dude, yeah. like, dude, on the, on, four, baby. Yeah, dude, on the live streaming threads where we would all post our, you know, oh, streaming, you know, whatever now. And, you know, on the Woody page. And, dude, such good time. Such good time. Woody. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Woody. <laughs> It's so classic, it's, dude. It's, oh, it's funny to me as 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 somebody who was you know fortunate enough to, to I guess join the community once you know streaming was a main thing and everything. But it's it's just funny to me how speedrunning lived prior to like a defined streaming era. Yeah, you, know, you guys are just yeah. uh, really passionate about what you do, and here we are. But uh, yeah, so uh, you you watched Tiki's run, got influenced by it, started running it yourself. Um, when was it that you first kind of realized that you could take the game further than other people could and you know what you know how long after you started running do you think it took before you said all right i'm going for world record or i'm i'm at that level were you already there when you watched tiki or i mean you know how what was the gap okay so 
whenever I kind of first got into streaming, you know, I was just doing runs, and I actually used uh, Flash Media Live Encoder, which was, you know, that that is some <laughs> OG <laughs> streaming software. And that's what I used, and where it didn't feature a timer, all it was was microphone and, you know, game feed. So I was doing runs. No one could really see my time, but, you know, Tiki, fortunately, watched my stream and recognized me as, like, one of the really good runners. And I did one run, and I got a 39-13. And we planned on racing at AGDQ 2012, and I was just like, dude, you're going you're gonna to smoke me. And the record was 38-57. And he was just like, dude, seriously, I'm going to smoke you? My best is 38-57. So I kind of started, you know you know, grinding out runs and blah, blah, blah. And then he started doing Iceless Heart. Now that, that alone was like such an obstacle for me. So I was just like grinding Iceless, grinding, 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 grinding so hard. And then we started doing the Iceless route. And then he like one day got like 3804. He's like, oh, world record, you know, busted the, busted the record. And then... Literally, the night that I came home, I was hanging out with some buddies. He told me 3804. The very first run that I did got a 3756. <laughs> there it is. Wow. Top free, dude. Talk about efficiency, <laughs> yeah. And then we knew what it was. Exactly. That was my first world record. I was just ecstatic. I can't. I can't explain. I was just like, oh my god, dude. I just beat my primary inspiration that got me into this entire speed running thing so you can just imagine how much joy that brought me and and, and how much motivation and you know I was looking at the run and I was just like okay this really isn't that optimal so it was just like okay you know you know kept doing runs 37 38 it was just, you know, optimizing a game. It's just like, okay, you know, movement here. It's like doing everything good, you know, timing stages and everything like that. And it just like more stuff came. And now we just become gods at the game. And now that 100% run going from 38.57 when I first started speed running the 100% category is now 35.53. Kaboom! Yeah, yeah that's... Second. Impressive, yeah. And to go back the, and go forth ahead. Ahead. Mind you, at the time, people looked at Tiki's hundred percent run, the thirty-eight fifty-seven, and they were just like, "This is unbeatable." The, no, like no one can do this because Tiki has always been, you know, on point. You know, at first times like speed running, and then I came in, and he was just like, "Dude, this is a whole new level of competition." So I got to give shout outs to Tiki for motivating me to speed run and being the best competition there ever has been. So, oh my god, dude. Like, can't, I, I, I can't express <laughs> so, it enough, dude. Like, Tiki is the man. Yeah, speaking of Tiki here, so uh, going into uh, SGDQ, I guess the last that I heard, the plan is that you guys are going to be racing. Is that still a thing? Is that is that true? Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, man. I can't great remember. rematch. The rematch. The rematch. Yeah, because he... He wanted to go to AGDQ 2014, but unfortunately could not make it due to school and other real life stuff. So now he'll be able to attend SGDQ. So we're going to give the salty run back and the epic meetup of the two best MMX players in the world. So it's going to be nice. Very, very good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that race for sure. Uh, you, you know, you seem to me as the kind of uh, the person that, or a kind of person that thrives with that camera on you and all the people watching you um yeah can you just describe like what was i guess a moment <laughs> when you really were feeling it at agdq i think there was a pretty definitive moment where you were getting into it um do you want to talk a little bit about what it's like to land that hadoken oh man all right so first off i want to see i, I, I want to say z wing beat me in the race fair and square i'm not about to be like oh you know Z Wing, dude, blah, 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 like, like, sp spurt some crap, you know, to make me look better. He beat me fair and square. That was a good race. I don't care what I said at the time. It was an awesome race. It was hype. Okay, so he was like, 
probably about, mm, let's say, 15 seconds ahead of me at the time, he ended up missing the chameleon head dog, and I looked over. I was just like, all right, you know, I got a, I got a solid chance here. And then I was just, I, I entered the chameleon room. I entered the chameleon room, and I was just like, I have to get this. I have to get this because he didn't, and then I have to show people the new tech. And then you know, I was just feeling it. I got it. I was just... Yes! <laughs> dude, and then hearing everybody behind me just like, what? It, it, dude, it was like a, it was like an Evo chant, man. Yeah, yeah so, it was crazy. Like, I, I, I gotta say, I was, I was right behind Caleb when that happened, and I literally jumped out of my seat. And yeah, the whole, the whole room went nuts. It's interesting to me because runs are really getting to the point now where they kind of have that Evo feel, where you know everybody in the room is backing you and. You do something amazing, and that room lights up. So that that's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some other games that you run just outside of Mega Man X. Uh, mm -hmm. So I mean, I I know personally, I'm wearing the Runaway Five shirt today. So you know, I nice. I'd love to you know talk about Earthbound with you, but I, I know that uh, X Two is kind of the one you're looking at at the moment. But why don't you just run through some of the other games you played? Why you picked them up? Um, okay. What you think of them? Okay, so other than the X series, I mean X series is kind of on lock. You guys understand it's my favorite MMA. Or, I mean, well, it's my favorite game series in general. So it's kind of a no-brainer why I would run those. Okay, so let's go other games. Um, Link to the Past. That's a huge game of my past. I mean, no pun intended. Um, so, Baha Um So, like that's a game that I beat like three times in a one day just casually so I did like master sword runs of that got ended up getting like a, a, a 2251 or something like that for master sword that's like the best I've ever done um, and then I still hold the world record for it Metal Gear Solid the twin snakes I'm a huge fan of the uh, Metal Gear series. I'm really hyped for Metal Gear Solid 5. That's how I originally knew Caleb Hart, by the way, was the Metal Gear Solid ones. Well, yeah, I, I ran it at AGDQ 2012, um, besides from MMX, but um, the, the the Twin Snakes run, um, it's it's a super, super fun game. You know, most of the games that I do run are, you know, super, super hardcore games that I played, you know, whenever I was younger. I mean, that, that's kind of... You know, the main category, like the main games that like people play whenever they do speed run. Um, I stopped running that about two years ago, and I ended up getting the world record with 101.52, which is a pretty solid run. But I do plan on getting back to that, you know, eventually. I'm not really sure when, but uh, it's really good. Then there's Ninja Gaiden Black. That I ran at AGDQ 2013. That is the most brutal speed game out there not only because it's like a two hour run but it's full of RNG full of oh you made one movement mistake prepare to get bopped and <laughs> like, everything comes at you it's like <sighs> okay you're done like you, All make, right. you make one little mistake like I've got like a, a few other games. I'm, I'm not sure how pressed you are for time or whatever. Oh yeah, let's let's just really quickly just yes or no, or you know one or the other favorite RPG speedrun. I know you run a couple, but what's your what's your favorite? Oh well, I mean there's Pokemon right, right now. There's Pokemon Blue and Earthbound, but right now Earthbound is my favorite because Earthbound is Earthbound. Everybody that plays Earthbound knows how godlike it is. It's such a fun game, it, but dude. And okay, so Earthbound is like broken as hell. I did a 150. An hour and fifty minute run. It required. It's like crazy out of bounds glitches and everything like that. That was a, a really solid run. I might get back to that eventually. I'm not really sure. Um, I did it for like two weeks, so that wasn't really too much time to spend on it. But you know. Well, I'll be rooting for it to come back anyway. I don't know if anybody else will, but I'm I'm a secret fan, so no no secret anymore. I like no. the Earthbound runs. I think that's a fun game to watch. Always been a fun game to play as well. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's Caleb Hart, guys, our guest. Uh, he's going to be sticking around for us as we go through the rest of the show. And uh, be sure to give him a follow, too, since uh, he's so courteous and jumped in on the show here. Um, but let's move on now, guys, to uh, our, our next segment here. Uh, and it is it is a good uh, little highlight opportunity here. This is uh, one that we like to call the big plays. So let's take a look here. Uh, this happened in the Mega Man Relay race. 
that happened last uh, Saturday. We had Used Pizza was tasked with bringing his team, Team to do a back from 50 seconds down. And he had to play both Mega Man 9 and 10. Here we see him going up against Concrete Man. Cleaning him up, no problem, making it look easy. Mega Man 9, though, it's Used Pizza's wheelhouse. Look at this on the Shark Boss. Going back and forth. Nobody does this cleaner. Making this look like the easiest fight in the world. Used Pizza is ridiculously consistent at this game. Building up to HGDQ, he was getting 33s like almost every attempt. This yeah. ended up getting a 32. All right, check uh, this out now. He's got the, uh, we, we're the Twin Devil. He's got a pause cancel these black hole bombs. Trying to get the one round here. And he does manage to do that. Take a look at this. Nice pause cancels. Gets the one round. Nice. And then in the refights here, going up against Galaxy Man, gets the pattern that everybody wishes they could. Oh, what a bro. Nice fast pattern there. But then he uh, unfortunately takes one step backwards here as he starts Mega Man 10 dying on Pump Man stage. So he goes right back to work saving time. Look at this. Check out this bird's fight in the immediate next stage. <laughs> yeah, see you later, birds. Open that door. I want to move to the next room. <laughs> Making it look easy. And uh, here we see him using an exploit that Capcom disapproves of on Strike Man. <laughs> Very good. Good stuff there. And uh, on the final fight of Mega Man 10, they were screen for screen. It was him and Slurpee, Team Primal and Team the Duo, but it was used pizza with the setup. Gets the perfect pattern and wraps it up for Team the Duo. Their first win in a relay race, guys. Pretty cool stuff. So let, me, let me ask you, uh, off off of the, the heels of that, uh, you know, that highlight video, uh, you know, the Mega Man Relay race, that's the second one that's happened. Uh, it was a three-team race. It had 25 players in it. Um, we had multiple different countries represented. What are your thoughts of uh, that relay race in particular? Let's, let's start there. Uh, Spike, what do you think? I, I just think it's insane that even if you had asked me, I don't even maybe not even going back very far. Uh, 25 people you guys could find to do put this race together. And the fact that so many of them were legitimate players, it's not like you just ask anybody who had picked up the game. Uh, so many, the speedrunning community is getting bigger and bigger, seemingly just you know every day. You're finding more runners, and you found a way to make three relatively balanced teams to make this an exciting finish. I figured I would have checked in if someone seen, you know, one team's on Mega Man 8, the other team's like on Mega Man 6, but it stayed close. It stayed exciting. And, uh, yeah, I think it was a huge success, obviously, just going off that highlight right there. Yeah, and uh, I think one of the interesting things about it, like you'd mentioned, the, the balance, uh, you know, this, this is a race that lasted almost six and a half hours. Uh, and for most of the way, it was a matter of, a, you know, a minute or two for most teams uh, at any given point. And there was a lot of back and forth, too. It wasn't consistently one team in the lead. Um, there was some trading going on there, a couple different points throughout the race. So I, I had a lot of fun. I actually was on uh, Team Primal. Uh, unfortunately, you know, as I'm playing the highlight reel for, for used pizza there, that was my team that was losing as a result of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of wish he was on my team. But, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I love that the community can come together and do something like that and uh you know it breaks the norm where it's you're so used to tuning into someone and watching them rta and they just play by themselves and they reset all the time and they're looking for the perfect run but there's so much more to it that can be done and i love these things like the relay race that just bring the community together for an opportunity to to uh interact like that um sinister go ahead I think it was a, an incredible watch. I, I caught the beginning probably up through Mega Man 4, and then I caught the end maybe the last three games or so. Um, definitely exciting. Ups and downs, like you said. A lot of good players. I was impressed at how many players were from like different countries. I mean, just you know, it was like a worldwide kind of thing uh, with people just coming from everywhere. Even the Japanese players getting involved is really exciting. And I think it opens up the door for other communities to do the same. Uh, I'm, I know I've seen uh, people trying to organize a Super Mario Brothers relay, and I was actually considering organizing a Ninja Gaiden relay for the classic game. So I think you'll see more and more of this happening. Uh, it, it lends itself definitely to the bigger communities. Obviously, Mega Man's a very, very popular game, and there's a lot of good runners out there. Um, so maybe for some franchises, it might be a little bit more difficult to put something like that together. But I think you'll be seeing more of this in the future. 
Yeah, I love these ideas. Like this Twitch even put this on the front page while it was happening, so it was getting some exposure there. Let me ask you, Caleb, uh, do you see this happening for something like Mega Man X, uh, the X series? Uh, is this something you would take part in? Oh yeah, dude. because like you said, it's not just one person resetting over and over and over trying to get the perfect run. It's something you can really sit back and watch because it goes through all the series. So it's not just one game, it's all of the games for that particular series. Right. And yeah, I would definitely love to be a part of something like that, you know, because it generates a lot of hype, you know, the viewers, and, you know, it's just it's just a fun watch for a lot of people. So. I definitely love the dynamic, just to jump back in, I love the dynamic of it being a team sport, because obviously speedrunning is mostly viewed more like golf or tennis I guess of sorts where it's one person doing it just himself yeah. and the fact that you like it, you know Golden if you score Mega Man 6 you're kind of letting your team down so you have that extra thing in the back of your mind I guess yeah, you absolutely. want to elaborate that on all I, I don't want to use this analogy because I don't think uh, it's going to hit home with a lot of people but it kind of felt like rec softball to me where it's just like you're getting a bunch mm -hmm. of guys together who all enjoy the, you know, the same thing and hey we're going to put some competition behind it and just have a good time all day uh, rooting for our teammates to do well. And it's, it's interesting. Like there's a mindset going into it too. Like when I, when I started, when I, when the, when the day began, my intention was when it got to my turn, I was just going to play it safe and pass the baton. Like I was not out to try and do anything risky. And then I noticed our team starting to fall behind in the first couple of games. And so I, you know, it got to my turn and I'm like, okay, well now I don't really have as much to lose. I'm going to try and be a little bit more aggressive with my run. And uh, I ended up picking up like 40 seconds, I think, in my section there. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, I think a lot of people did. Big shout out to Joka who organized it. Uh, you guys should check it out. The replay link is available right down there. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. But in quick, the, quick question for our guests before we move on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Caleb, would you rather have the X series as a standalone relay, or do you think it could be tacked on to the end of the classic Mega Man? Uh, relays they've been doing. Ooh, that's dude, a that would be super, <laughs> super hype, dude, because it's like, okay, the true Mega Man fans are going to be the ones watching the entire relay, right? It's not just like the, the super casual, it's just going to be like, you know, the casual fans and the the true Mega Man fans, so it's like you get you get the best of both worlds with the X series and the classic. So I think that would be an amazing idea. Just you know, it would probably be like you know twelve, thirteen, fourteen hours or something. Yeah, like quite that. a long race, but no, that's I agree with you. I think it's bringing the hype if they did something like that. But you know, if it's like on a Saturday where people you know have days off. It's like they can literally just it's like man, I don't have anything to do. Oh, the relay. With the classic in the X series, I'm it's going that. on all day. I yeah. watched that, and that's what that's dude. It's like that would be that would be so awesome. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's move on from the relay race and talk about our next topic here. So the SGDQ games list has been out. We've had a chance to fully analyze it and figure out what we think is going to be in and what's not in, and it, it's finally reaching the point where it's starting to become more concrete. So let me ask you guys, based on what you saw, was there any game that surprised you either because it's in SGDQ? or it's out of SGDQ. Uh, let's go ahead and start with Sinister on this one. What what surprises you, either because it's in or it's out? Well, I, I got to say that, you know, they take a fairly conservative approach when it comes to doing these marathon schedules, and that's worked, historically speaking. So I didn't find anything too, too surprising. You know, I thought they did a, a pretty good job, and, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd actually rather hear more from... Uh, Spike, who's you know covered this ad nauseum and quite at length, but um, Way too I mean, much. I, I guess I guess I'd say maybe you know the the lack of uh, Super Mario sixty four would be yeah, I think that no, I think that's a good one. I mean, Super Mario sixty four is kind of the staple speed run. I think like when I think of people who are outside of the community, um, what what they know of speed running, I think Mario sixty four is one of the first games that comes to mind. So it's very surprising that. Uh, it's just, I mean, a marathon without Mario 64, uh, yeah, I think that kind of hits home a little bit. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. I, you know, some people are going to say, well, you have to have Mario 64. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's that's an interesting one to note. Spike, what about you? What do you think? 
Um, a couple of games that just jumped out at me. They, I guess I'm sort of bouncing off of what Sinister said about it was a conservative approach they took to the games list. And I would have thought, I didn't think we were just going to see, all right, obscure games done quick. But I thought we were going to see a different flavor from PGDQ. Um, something a little more, I don't know if you want to call it casual, but just giving uh, chances to like games that haven't seen as many opportunities. So games that jump out and made the list. Uh, we're seeing Mario World 96 Exit slash Lunar Dragon again. We're seeing Super Meat Boy 106% for the third time. We're seeing Final Fantasy VI for the third time. All two, you know, hour and a half plus long games that are obviously very popular, but I've seen a lot of appearances. And could you have maybe found other games that didn't make the cut? Um, another thing, the, uh, this is a little one. I'm not just saying that Olden's in the call. I don't personally agree with Mega Man 5 versus 6 being a bit more. I feel like they uh, kind of create bidding wars out of wherever they see fit, and I don't think that I, I don't think taking the two least popular NES Mega Mans we, and pitting them in a bid war is necessarily a great idea. We raised thirteen dollars, and Mega yes, Man exactly. Five wins. But <laughs> just like no matter what, guys like you and Dark Man and Dark Terror, you still have to practice for it in the event that you don't get it. And at least, like you say, take something like Mega Man Two versus Mega Man Three, two really popular Mega Mans. People always disagree about them, but uh, that's you know if you don't end up running it, Cipher who doesn't run Mega Man Two or Checkers who doesn't run Three says, well, we raised a lot of money in the bid. Do we really expect Five versus Six to be like a big bid war? And that's just the example I'm using, but I don't know. Do you think so people guess- donate for bid wars based on uh, you know their experience with the game, or do they have to? I guess my question is, do they have to be familiar with the game in order to want to donate for one or the other, or is that something that they might just put their money towards anyway? I think it's one of the things that goes into it. Another thing is just going to be, you know, I, I want to support my favorite streamer. Maybe like I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, all right, between Mega Man two or three, do I want to support Checkers or I want to support Cipher? Okay, like, yeah, so- absolutely. Um, Caleb, do you have any surprises? What do you, what What do you think? Are you surprised you're in? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, not really, because Mega Man X is a staple. I agree. And Mega Man X has not been seen since AGDQ 2012. So, um, I think presenting, I mean, first off, AGDQ, or, I mean, uh, you know, Mega Man X2, which is a game that hasn't been seen in a while, is a good thing to add in because, you know, it, it's not been a part of AGDQ for a long time, despite, I mean, well, in addition to a four person race. So that's gonna be that's gonna be amazing. And yeah, I'm definitely I mean, looking forward to it. You can't not have a race between me and Tiki. You I agree. Can't, it's gonna be can't. too exciting. It's gonna it's gonna bring in the viewers the hype. It's gonna be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I guess I'm gonna just kind of quickly throw in my thoughts too. Um, you know, it's it's kind of more a story of the exclusions for me this time around than the inclusions. Um, you know, we don't have, I don't, as far as I know, we don't have any Yoshi's Island. We don't have any SM64. Uh, Ocarina of Time, I think, is a bonus game at this point. It's not even in the marathon for sure. So some of, like, the staple games are being excluded. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. Like, I don't want you to think that I'm campaigning for those games to be in there. I just think it's really interesting that we're kind of stepping away from games that are known speedrunning games. Um, you know, either because they have uh, big viewerships or they make four good speed games. Uh, we almost didn't have Super Metroid as well. That got in, uh, fortunately. It uh, looks like right. 8% is going to be. For a right. while, no one offered it. No one wanted to touch it, but uh, it looks like that might stick around. So, yeah. Is I, there any pressure to turn that low percent into the new low, <laughs> lower I, percent, I guess? I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. That would be interesting. It's, it's, it's going to come down to the consistency that they're able to pull it off. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if, it, if it's consistent enough, then they may go ahead and make it a bid war, do something of that sort, or... They may just do both, honestly. Yeah. They may just say, okay, we're just like they did the Spore Spawn RTA. I mean, I was going to say, I think it's Spore Spawn RTA. A bit longer. All right, yeah. I want to move on. Uh, let's talk about speedruns in the news. So we've had a couple of different uh, opportunities to be covered by some major uh, uh, you know, news, uh, whether it's uh, magazines or 
uh, newspapers, things of that nature. A lot of online articles as well. Uh, Sinister, why don't you tell us a little bit about this Andrew G. article that happened in the Boston Globe? Well, first of all, I think it's fantastic that we would get an, a speed running article in a national newspaper that's as well recognized as the Boston Globe. Uh, it's actually not the first time Andrew G's been featured, believe it or not. The same guy wrote an article on him seven years ago, uh, and that was, I think, back when the, the time was not to, to where it is now. Um, they did m miss a few things. It was a great article overall, but they, they actually miscredited Andrew with the uh, not only Super Mario Brothers 1, but also 2 and 3 as having the records in all three, which he did at one point in time, but that's no longer the case. So there was, there was a little bit of an error there. Um, which kind of you know brings up the question of of who's responsible? Are we supposed to make sure that these people know the the facts really well, or is it up to them to make sure they get their fact checking right? Maybe yeah. you can speak to that a little bit, Golden. I think uh, I think all of us have at one point read some speedrunning article somewhere and and done one of these where we're just you know head smack in the head as we read it like oh my god <laughs> I can't believe how many things they butchered in this article. But I at the same time like I think. It's really cool that we're getting coverage from things like the Boston Globe, and uh, there's a Super Metroid article coming up in this issue of, issue of Game Informer. Um, myself, Zost, and Ivan worked together on that one. Um, and just to give you kind of a counterpoint to the Andrew G. article, uh, with the Game Informer one, the guy who wrote it, uh, his name's Joe Juba, um, he contacted me about wanting to write the piece and just kind of asked for my thoughts on it, what I thought, uh, uh, you know, we could contribute if we could pull people in for it. And he really kind of let me be involved with the, uh, you know, facilitating the article, basically. So he gave me an opportunity to proofread it when he first wrote it. Um, I, you know, kind of went through and corrected some of his mistakes. Um, but for the most part, I felt like he did his homework. He's the kind of person that's watching streams. Um, he plays a lot of Super Metroid, so writing the article was natural for him. Um, and yeah, I, I think there, there's a little bit of a balance. Like we all want it to be accurate so that no false information gets out there. But at the same time, you know, can we be that upset if they make a little bit of a mistake on a record? Um, you know, if it's the Boston Globe, do we hold them accountable? I mean, we don't really have any, uh, place that we can, you know, send them to, to go ahead and, and get their facts straight necessarily. One of the things right. about speaking... Like you yeah, I mean, I, I I think that it is, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. Uh, we did the the more the the bigger focus is that we're getting more exposure, which is fantastic. So this is only like this is a small thing, but you know, we'd hope that as as things progress and there's more, and more articles that we we do get things a little more close to correct. I would think. Yeah, I think I'm with you on that. So Caleb, uh, have you noticed any of this? Were you involved in any of, like the AGDQ interviews? Unfortunately not. I really did want to be, but, you know, I guess I was at the wrong place at the wrong time, you know? Yeah, so. understandable. I mean, have you have you ever noticed it? You know, you're reading um, something speedrunning related and you kind of notice a mistake and wish they would have got it right? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, get your facts straight, you know what I mean? So, you know, the more accurate, the better, but, you know, not, not everything can be perfect, so mm -hmm. it's just kind of... This yeah. kind of reading, reading, or I me mean, reading over that is just something to look forward to the correct next time. Yeah, I think so. I think we're getting to that point too. People are starting to, uh, you know, be a little bit more careful about what they say because they're starting to realize how big the community is too. Um, I guess that pretty much wraps up my thoughts uh, for that. But yeah, really good stuff. That interesting, interesting to see all the coverage that speedrunning is getting. Uh, at this point in time. So let's go ahead and move on to our next topic here. It is uh, another segment as we move on. Uh, Sinister One, I'm going to need your help on this one here. This is the record setter segment. We're talking Super Punch Out with Zallard. Uh, let's walk through a couple of his fights here. First off, we've got the bear fight. Well, yeah, these, these fights are all really, really optimized now. Zallard's put a ton of work into this game, and it's a truly a really random game. I mean, he, I can't even tell you how many attempts he's done, but the biggest thing that he's figured out in this game is he's found all these cool buffer strats that, uh, you know, most of the opponents, you can get them dizzy, as you saw, you know, Bear Hugger was there. Uh, he was dizzy, and, you know, basically what, what you can do is you can do a series of punches that will take an exact number of frames, and then you can end with a frame-perfect punch to make sure that you get the proper knockdown that you're looking for and Zallard kind of combed through the game and, and, and found a bunch of these. Um, 
you do still need luck, of course, um, which he gets like so. This one here, you'll see he'll get he'll get bald, bull, dizzy, and then he's gonna start doing these random punches. It's like, what is he doing? What is he doing? Oh, that's what he's doing. He's knocking them out. So, um, a lot of cool stuff like that. I don't know if any of you guys watch uh, watch Zallard One or Super Punch Out at all. Do you guys ever check him out? Uh, <laughs> I watched his race at the AGDQ, uh, the blindfolded as well. Uh, I shouldn't say race. I should say his run. Uh, right. Watch the blindfolded there. Uh, what about you guys? I, most of my punch out knowledge is obviously from watching Sinister. I do know of uh, Zallard's mistaken frame perfect trick. I guess he did with uh, the blindfold on at the Q. But well, oh, I see. I saw a little bit of his run. It's pretty impressive. Just knowing it, I know what Sinister's run. It's funny you mention that because we're going to talk about that in another fight. Now in this in this buffer strat, he's actually wasting six frames on purpose. Um, because it allows him to set up a frame perfect punch in the next phase. So that was like some really forward thinking kind of thing. Like instead of hitting him as soon as possible um, and then taking something, you know, more difficult later on, he's like, let me just do this so that I know I can get the, the hit guaranteed. Um, you know, setting things up to be guaranteed is really nice in a game that's already super random. Um, and as you can see, he gets a really fast knockout on uh on mr sandman one of the harder opponents but um, one of the things uh here we got super macho man i'll let you talk about it in just a second but i just think this game in general is a very fast paced game compared to regular punch out is that a fair statement to make it is because the fights are a lot shorter and uh you know that 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 can be a good thing and a bad thing i guess it, it all depends on how you look at it but um he's really pushed this run to a point where he's satisfied with it, which is hard to say. Like for all of us that are here, you know, we're all speedrunners, and we all have like certain goal times for our games, like the the degree to where we want to push it. And I mean, a lot of times we don't we don't get there, or you know, we're not quite there yet. Um, you know, none of us are 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 giving up, obviously, but um, it must be a good feeling to kind of get there. Like when when Zallard finished this run, he was like, yeah, that's it. I like, knew it at that point. It's, like that's, it is. That's as good as it gets. Yes. And then you're going to see here, um, after after we get through this fight, um, he's going to take him out pretty quick. He had to kind of do something risky at the end. He had to go for that accidental frame-perfect punch that he got <laughs> that's, in that's the almost. marathon. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's actually he actually has to do that uh, again in the next fight and he got lucky there to get that that pattern um, but a lot of times you have to kind of improvise and change your strategies based on how far ahead or behind you are you might have to take some additional risks so he basically just had to do like the riskiest thing possible here and then he got it and um, not only that but the one nice thing about super punch out compared to regular punch out is um, you can get random KOs, so like he's gonna knock, uh, he's gonna knock this guy down again, and it's random to to whether or not he's gonna get up from this knockdown. So, so it can you know, be a, it can be a blessing and a curse depending on which one you yes, get. Yes, because it's the last fight. I mean, this is the last fight of the run, so he's just praying right now, like please, please just get counted out. <laughs> yeah, and he gets it. So there it and is. And he gets it. Yeah, that's the new uh, Super Punch-Out single segment record by Zallard. Very impressive stuff. Good stuff, Zallard. Yeah, let's yeah. go ahead yeah, and... Shout-outs uh, shout to Zallard. We're, we're probably not going to see anybody uh, anybody taking that run on anytime hey. soon. All right, let's move on, guys. we got to step out of bounds for just a minute here on this next topic. We're going to talk about some stuff that's oh, a little God. bit <laughs> unrelated to speedrunning, but might have an impact. I so just, I just had one last question. Go for oh. it. Okay, so you got Lil Mac and... Uh, Vanilla Punch Out. Who's the guy in the the SNES version? It's still Little Mac. Oh, it's, oh, it's still Little Mac. You just you just He's got just like there. Yeah. <laughs> it's tall Mac. Yeah, he know. just he, he, he dyed his hair. He got a little <laughs> little bit of a tan. You know, guys, I'm just gonna dye my hair real quick. Yeah. Just, just I'm I'm going for a new look here. All yeah. right. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on, guys. Uh, this is a topic that uh, hits home for some people. Uh, you know, Twitch Plays Pokemon is wildly successful. It's had thousands and thousands of viewers um, throughout its uh, short life, really. I mean, it's only been around for a couple of weeks. Um, but I guess the, the other side of it is that the amount of chat, uh, you know, bandwidth that gets consumed uh, was maybe something that Twitch wasn't prepared for when it first popped up. Do we think that at any point that started you know signaling a red flag at twitch i mean obviously we've seen him move uh twitch plays pokemon onto its own separate chat server 
um, within a few days after it, it, it kind of went viral. But, um, you know, is it at the point now where Twitch Plays Pokemon isn't a problem anymore? Is it still affecting streams? What, what are your thoughts? Let's go to Spike first. I know Spike's really interested in this topic here. <laughs> He's got a lot to say. Uh, well, okay. The biggest thing I'm going to first say, I'm never going to go against something popular. If, if there are a lot of people out there who really love this, and obviously there are, then by all means, let it happen. My biggest thing is that this started supposedly as a social experiment, <laughs> which, is, which is fine. Okay. It, 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 you know, you say, okay, it started a social experiment, it blew up, whatever, and he kept doing it. The problem I have with it now, if it is affecting any of our chats, if it's affecting the rest of our ability to watch our channels that we like, we could have known that pretty well had they taken some break after they took 16 straight days to beat the uh, Gen 1 of Pokemon. Why did we go immediately into Pokemon Crystal? That's my only problem with so you're thinking, um, you know, if we if we put in a little bit of space, we give them like a one or two day recovery time. I was thinking of that, other than that, sure, but like some period of time where we can say definitively, okay, TPP is not affecting my chat experience, Bible book. Uh, let me say this. Uh, I mean, I've noticed some of the, uh, you know, difficulties getting into chat and uh, other, you know, chat issues you know duplicating messages or messages not showing up but i i would say that i've noticed that a long time ago too it wasn't specifically when twitch plays pokemon started but so you know my question is you know was it always there is that something that um you know we can we can definitively accuse twitch plays pokemon of 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 you know impacting or is that twitch being twitch you know uh i guess to, i i agree with you it'd be interesting to see if they took it down for a while um, have you guys noticed anything with your chats uh, recently? I mean, has it been, uh, to me, I think it's been a little better, but. I mean, uh, like at, at the start, like everybody else has said, it's just like before TPP started, you know, the, like Twitch was not eating messages. It was like, like at least I say about 95% of them were going through, you know what I mean? Which is, you know, a pretty good ratio. And then TPP started up. And even though they had like a separate server for their chat or whatever, our streams, you know, just you know, that's that's the whole the the buffer emote that got made or whatever, you know, yeah. kind of like almost, you know what I mean? So like, and it's just like, guys, can you see my messages? Like that was a huge thing in people's chats. I've noticed, you know, and you know, the streams that like have the chats like in the actual stream. You would look at like the stream chat and then the, ch the stream chat on the actual stream, and it's like completely different. You know, a lot of messages weren't there. And it's just like okay, you know, something's something's getting a little messed up here. Like, yeah, and I think it's fair to say that we've seen a lot of tweets recently about video issues or people being unable to stream recently. The last couple of days, that's kind of been uh, a predominant thing, um, but. It's tough to say whether it's specifically the result of, of one stream or not. I mean, I can remember when people first started raiding other streams uh, and just, like, spamming an emote that there was uproar about that because that was causing too much, uh, you know, sudden ingest. Uh, you know, if people were spamming a paragraph or an ASCII art, something like that. Um, you know, that, that was... They were requesting that that stop um, at first. I, I think they're a little bit more tolerant of it now, but... It's an interesting to thought. I don't know. I mean, obviously, it's it's a big thing, and uh, it's something that Twitch has every reason to get behind because it is so successful. Um, but who knows? Maybe that is uh, affecting stream quality. Maybe it isn't. Let's move on, though. Can we Next. get a quick buy or sell on that, actually? Buy or sell. Sinister. Buy or sell. I Twitch am plays Pokemon. Well, I am selling Twitch plays Pokemon. I think that we need to get rid of this. I think it's a fad. I think it needs to go away. It's <laughs> Shots really fired stream chats it's 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 causing oh. buffering and uh it's it's seen its time let's, if I, let's if, move on if i had known that you were that passionate about it i'd have picked you first i didn't realize <laughs> i you was wanted... about to say <laughs> there it passion. is yeah i, didn't, I wasn't expecting said that you're wrong I, I, I twitch plays pokemon i just remember the fact that you that we didn't take some sort of break from it i think buy twitch plays pokemon and sell it to you stream that's that's all i'm thinking <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good to me um all right so enough about that. Let's move on. We got another topic here. Um, Twitch recently gave subscribers, uh, specifically streamers who have subscriber, the option 
uh, to limit their source and high quality feeds to paying subscribers only. Ooh, okay. Here we go. Uh, All four of us on this call at the moment have this potentially uh, a potential option on our streams. I get the feeling that none of us are going to be using it, but uh, let's just talk about that a little bit. Uh, Do you think it's a good idea? First of all, Uh, would any of you be willing to say, I'm going to try that out? I, I think, think so. I would. Go ahead. I, I I I would consider trying it just because I I don't see it having much of a downside uh, for my stream. It could in fact help people out because if you know if people are getting a lot of buffering and things like that, then um, maybe at the at the lower qualities. Because I mean, I stream eight eight bit games for the most part. Like, how much quality are you going to lose from source to to high or yeah, whatever? Like, I it think- would probably look exactly the same. Outside so, of something like Wii U or a PC game, how many games are played in something higher than 480p to begin with? You know, I mean, you're going to be streaming either composite or S video most of the time. Um, does it really make that much of a difference whether you're on medium quality or high quality? I, I think personally, as a viewer, I can tell the difference between something that's source and something that's medium, even if there isn't much of a difference. But I don't know that I would feel compelled to subscribe to somebody especially in the speedrunning community, if it was, you know, medium versus high, because I don't think there's that much of a difference. I think this is something that has more uh, application in modern gaming communities, like your your Call of Duties, your fighting games, you know, your StarCraft, that kind of thing. Um, Caleb, what do you think? You know, it's just another option. It's either you can have it or you can't. You know, so it's like... Uh, the thing is, like you know, it's 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 a marketing thing. You know, it's like well, if you have this enabled, one, it's gonna give people more incentive to subscribe to your channel. You know, and you know, prof like Twitch profits and you profit. But at the same time, it's like if I want to view the stream in HD, I have to subscribe. So it's Right, like, so it's maybe an incentive thing? Yeah, but it's also a little bit of a turnoff because now you could uh, view in HD, but now it's, it's like, well, now if I want to view in HD, I have to subscribe. So it's like... <laughs> They're taking away something that was already there, basically. Yeah. yeah. But like I said, it's an option. So if you want to, you can, but you're not required. So it's it's, it's a good thing that Twitch did it because it, it, it it's an experiment. It's an experiment. So I think I think it's kind of good because it's, you know it's an yeah. option. So. Would, would do you think it would have been better or worse if they just blanket implemented it and said you have to do this on your stream? Uh, uh, that no, I I don't agree with that. I, I, I don't I don't agree because it's just basically forcing viewers to pay money to now have an option that was free and it's like you know that's 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 bullshit <laughs> spike. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry spike what do you think i mean the one thing i'll say about it because uh, again i think in our speedrunning community you're not going to see a lot of people using it unless we are running modern games i'm right now running a modern game tropical freeze and i'm not going to consider using because i view it as a tv platformer that's simple enough to see uh i i will say that because being subscribing to someone essentially just means you're trying to support that person you're not really getting any perks other than you get the subscriber badge and you get the emails so getting some other incentive i think is a good idea by twitch was this necessarily the best idea to do it in? I don't know, because, again, I don't see this being a big deal for a lot of people. But I do like that there's something else they're giving to uh, make an incentive to subscribe to your favorite channels. Yeah, I mean, I think that that pretty much sums up my thought on it. I don't think I would ever implement it just because it's taking away something that's already there. Um And if people want to subscribe, I view it more as a, you know, if you really enjoy that streamer, you're going to subscribe to him anyway, whether or not you get something out of it. So, um, yeah, I think we're kind of all on the same page on that one. I mean, it's, it's interesting that it's out there. We'll see if anybody tries to use it. Um, and I don't know, who knows? We'll see what, uh, what comes of it. I, I, I might, I might use it for a week just to see, you know, the statistics, but then I'll go, I'll go back. You know, for sure, just 
but you know, I, I, I can almost say that there, there will be negative results from and, that. And I guess the final thought here before we move on, uh, I would just add that uh, from Twitch's perspective, this is a good move for them, I think, because it just reduces the amount of bandwidth. If, if everybody is using this feature, then 99% of people that tune into streams are going to be watching them in medium quality or lower. How many of you tune into streams right now and purposefully set it to medium? I don't think any of us do that. I think we kind sure. of go for the highest... No. Uh, you know, video that's out there that we could that we can watch. Uh, so I think it makes sense from just a bandwidth perspective that they implement this, but I don't see it being uh, used a lot in our community. But now, anyway, now is now is it a coincidence that this came out right after Twitch plays Pokemon? Oh, <laughs> sorry, had to get that conspiracy <laughs> theory in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh that man, for, for <laughs> conspiracy <laughs> theories, go to twitchtv sinister one <laughs> All right, let's move on, guys. You know, sometimes we make great plays in speedrunning, and other times we'd rather wish people didn't see what we did. And fortunately, sometimes we actually get video of people making mistakes. We call it Glitch Please. Take a look at this. Our good friend Andy playing Link to the Past. He's putting the misery in Misery Mire here. Take a look at this fight. Starts out normally. Gets a nice couple solid hits in. Everything looking good. He was a few minutes behind uh, his PB at this point, so... Uh, nothing really to lose here, but take a look at this, the unconventional strategy of uh, pausing and walking straight into the eyeball for the death. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, that is just embarrassing. Oh, you, you know, that's that's one of those things you just got to, That's it happens sometimes, you know? It happens to the best of us. Oh, man, for dry red eyes, Link is awesome. Oh, that is oh, just unfortunate. Uh, uh, Man. Maybe next time. Sorry, try again. Hey, if you're going <laughs> to die in a speed game, you may as well do it in a hilarious fashion. I agree. All right, guys. We're almost done with our first episode chat. I want you guys to get your questions going right now. Any questions you have for any of us on the show, it's our segment that we call the Boss Rush. It's your opportunity to ask questions to anybody on the show, particularly <laughs> our guest Caleb, since he's here uh, for one week and one week only. The show you wrote Let's go ahead and get some questions out there. I'm going to get a uh, question in because the chat lit lag, obviously. Uh, Caleb, how old were you when you first started cooking? Oh, yeah. Started cooking? Nice. Probably about eight. So were you a natural? Oh, wow. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, like, my grandma has always been, like, super into it. and always used to go over to her house, and she would cook you know, like, really, really good stuff, and I would always watch her. I was always so interested. My dad was the same way, you know, we'd, we'd like to smoke a lot of chicken, and I would always just be like, you know, the annoying little kid that would just ask, why, 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 why do you do this, why, 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 but, you know, at the same time, you know, it was really, it was really good for them, because they're, they're just like, you know, maybe, maybe you can, you know, really do something with this, you know, it's just like, maybe he's, maybe he's, you know, wanting to be a cook or something like that, so... Yeah, you can say I was a natural because I would always try to do what they did, and I would I would really succeed. Like I would I would get joy. I remember I was like ten years old, and I cooked breakfast for my family. I got up like before school. I had to be there at eight. I got up at like six thirty and cooked breakfast for my family. You know, just the classic bacon, eggs, toast. You know, just and pancakes kind of thing going on there. Uh -huh. and they, really enjoyed that you know so and, and right now you know i work in a restaurant so you know I've, I've got i've got years of experience and you know i'm finishing up culinary school so nice that's kind of what i do so awesome cool stuff i have some questions from the chat for you guys uh the first one is from uh, concarius and concarius wants to know what our opinions are on the srl mystery tournament are you guys familiar with that i can explain it if you need me to well, I know, I know it's like, I know it's like you just like random games, and then you just like what practice them for a week, and then you race. Uh, it's it's blind races actually, as far as I know. So you don't know what game you're playing until right before the race starts, and you it's head to head matches, and it's kind of a double elimination tournament. I think it's a really cool idea. Um, it gets you playing a lot of games you're not familiar with. Uh, I did it. I did it last year. I was in one of the mystery tournaments, and I got a bunch of DOS games. So. <laughs> I mean, some some people are getting you know the usual like SNES platformer, NES platformer, that kind of thing. Um, 
I would say that my game pool wasn't uh, typical of everybody else's, but yeah, it's a, it's a cool idea. It's been they've done a couple of them. They've kind of shown some of the final matches uh, on a, a tournament stream, so I, I like it. I think it's cool. Have any of you guys been a, a part of it? Not am yet. I, the only one? I have not participated. Okay. I am, but I I just love the idea of taking speedrunners out of their element and saying like, all right, we're gonna take we're gonna take these baseball players, or like when they take celebrities and they put them in the All Star Celebrity Baseball game. Or yeah, whatever, exactly. Basketball game, and just saying, all right, now we're taking these two guys. You know them for you know these two games that they always run, and now they're gonna play some weird DOS game, like you're saying. Right. And, uh, it kind of. I think it's always you. a fun watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so that's yeah. I, I think it's a good idea, and uh, I'm looking forward to many, many more tournaments. Uh, next question here, uh, questions from Ancap two one seven says, "Sinister, how's the Ninja Gaiden relay relay race going?" Uh, it's coming together slowly. We we definitely have runners for Ninja Gaiden one and three, um, and and probably two. But we're, we're we we even got some for uh, uh, the Game Boy Ninja Gaiden Ninja Gaiden Shadow. Um, I, I'd say <laughs> nice. you can expect something within the next month or so. Okay, is, is probably a, that's a reasonable timeline. I love the the image that just froze on yeah, screen. Yeah, that's, that oh, is man. really good. That's a good <laughs> one. I like it. Um, next question I, I, here uh, from Funky Flump: Any promising new speed games getting popular or being run that you look forward to seeing more of? I guess for me, Tropical Freeze jumps to mind. Spike's playing it. A bunch of people jumping on the hype train there. I like that game a lot. It looks like a lot of fun. I actually uh, picked up a Wii U just for that game. I want to try it out. So maybe sometime soon I'll do a first playthrough. But yeah, uh, anybody else? New game? Mother, What's the new mother, hype game? Mother 3. Mother 3. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that's obviously the next installment after, you know, Earthbound or whatever, but... Uh, this is this is one guy that runs it, and he's got like a six hour and thirty minute run, and you know, we'll we'll see where that goes. But it, I love Mother Three, man. It's, it's a great game. Yeah, I had a chance to play through that as well. Uh, let's just go ahead and wrap up a couple more questions here. Caleb, quickly, favorite game of all time? Favorite game of all time, man. I can't, I can't put a price on on one game, man. I mean, dude. I'll just, you know what? I'll just give you a, I'll just give you a top, three. top three. Here we go. Final Fantasy Tactics, Mega Man X two, and Earthbound. Dude, wow. They're, they're two all RPGs. Two and RPGs. Mega Man X not in the list. Can you believe it? Yeah. Wow. Interesting. I like it. I like it. I agree with X two, but I figured X would have been right there with it. That's crazy. All right. Final question of the day comes from our good friend Dram fifty five. What do your family and friends think of your speed gaming? <laughs> good good final question um, you know man like 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 seriously they support it they don't understand it because you know, <laughs> you know they're kind of older they're not really familiar with like internet life man so it's like they don't really fully understand what you said but it's like they they know that i benefit from it and they know i have fun and they fully support it you know they see me cutting you know, they walk in here. It's like oh, shirtless, you know, in front of like, you know, hundreds of people. But you know, they're, they're, they're there to support me, man. So they're all for it. Awesome. Anybody else? Like, have you you know friends and family behind you? What what's yeah what's yeah? I I definitely have support. You know, I've actually beaten uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Four Turtles in Time co op with my mom on stream. No, so, I remember, I'd I say that's some that. pretty good support. Yeah, I'd say that that is uh, absolutely. I actually had a chance to uh, meet your mom as well at uh, SGDQ. Yes. So yeah, a big fan of Sinister there. Um, I I guess me personally, uh, I, it's one of those things where like I think my parents understand kind of. They don't really know completely what it is. I I know they've watched my SGDQ run, for instance, um, but I don't think they delved too deeply into it. Like I I'm not even sure they could name my stream. Uh, <laughs> If they, you know, were quizzed, what is Golden Stream? They wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> They'd probably write the L instead of the one and watch StarCraft instead. So, um, I don't know. Uh, you know I, I don't think any of us are uh, in a situation where we're being adamantly told not to speed game. Right. Um, yeah. It's crazy lucky. <laughs> yeah. 
Absolutely. All right. Well, guys, we have just one more segment today. Uh, before we wrap things up, we got to end this show with uh, a very important thing that we call the speech. 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 All right. Uh, so the way this works is that be- any one of us could be called on to give a speech, and we have to talk about whatever we want to talk about for 30 seconds. Uh, so start thinking of what you want to talk about here. I'm going to pick one of us at random. And that person is... Impromptu. Caleb Hart 42, you've been chosen. 30 seconds. Anything on your mind that you want to get out there right now? Look right into that webcam. Okay. Uh, I know, I, know I, I say this a lot. But once again, if you're feeling down, and it's like you're in the swamp, you don't know what to do. Stick to your roots. Stay with what you're good at and only improve upon that. You make something of that and you never give up on it. You 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 hold on to that and you make something of it. There and it is. Like I, like I said, just 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 improve on your goals and just strive to be the best that you can possibly be. Wow, that, we're never going to have so a better speech. Better that was good. I, know. <laughs> yes. I was like, thank God Caleb got selected. <laughs> I was sitting, sinister. I was sitting there. I was like, oh God, I don't have anything prepared. <laughs> I really. <laughs> please don't pick me, please. We're never doing <laughs> that segment so... again. That was the best we've ever had. Oh man, uh, nice. Tired of that segment. <laughs> that, yeah. All kinds of thanks, Caleb, in the chat. <laughs> yeah, oh, unbelievable. Wow, that's. I hope. That's on that note, uh, Spike. I'm going to task you with uh, giving us a raid target here as we wrap up our first ever episode. Uh, wow! And, and I'm starting to press buttons all over the place here. We're just open up segments that don't exist anymore. Uh, I'm getting trigger happy on the controller here. Uh, but let's just uh, let's find a target here. We did it. We made it through one episode, everybody. That is the final split, episode one. Be sure to follow Caleb Hart 42, our guest. Thanks so much, Caleb, for for stopping by, for flexing for us. Uh, and, and of course, uh, all the rest of us, our Twitch accounts are somewhere. I can't point, but, uh, underneath our, our boxes there. So, uh, we'd appreciate it if you'd follow everybody on the show and tell people about the show because it's brand new, uh, and spreading it to other people would be much appreciated. So, uh, do we have a, do we have a target spike? Did I, did I give we you enough time? Do have a tar- we do have a target attack. Uh, this guy has... Uh, it blown my mind how quickly he is picking up these games. Uh, now a classic man runner. We know him as Jorf. You can follow him in that link right there. What is our raid message? What is our raid message? Yeah, do we know what our raid message is for? Well, I, I see them spamming an image in chat, so I think they're they're going to take care of it for us. Okay, you got uh, it. All right. You guys I, I don't know it. what the image is, but I'm just going to assume they know what they're doing. Ice uh, storm, apparently. Great job, guys. We made it through one episode. It's, you, know, it. you never know we how many it, more we're going to get, but we made it through one, and that's the most important thing. So, uh, guys, again, for Sinister One, for Caleb Hart 42, for Spike Vegeta, I'm Golden. And just a reminder that your run isn't over until you hit the final split. We'll see you next week. Have a good week, everybody.